Hello, brethren. The Storehouse Today, part one of four. We're going to enter into a new study, and we're going to go over a very, very important subject, and that is God's storehouse. Where is it today? Uh, what group of people are leading out with the true final message of the Lord, and therefore worthy of our tithes? Uh, we're going to look at a lot of different things in our four-part series to kind of guide us through this whole mess, because it's today it's very contro controversial among the uh, especially present truth believers, because there's, you know, people saying, well, you know, this organization has that problem and that problem and this problem, and therefore God has kind of left uh, every individual to do as he wants and uh, just do the right thing and produce the right message and you'll be fine. Uh, don't worry necessarily about tides. Keep them in your pocket and just disperse with them as you wish. All kinds of these false ideas are spread around us today, brethren. So we want to kind of help clear this matter. We prayed. We've done a report on our on our website called Hear Ye the Rod. And uh, we, we went into this very, very carefully on that site. And we'll give you that at the very end of our study, the link to that. But uh, we want to make this presentation so that we can provide clarity uh, to this controversial issue. So we prayed, we ask that you do the same, claim the promise of John uh, 16, 13, as we always ask, and that uh, he will be faithful as he always is to uh, guide us into all truth. It's not us that guides us into all truths or our thinking or our understandings, but it's the spirit of truth that takes over and be, be, becomes our guide. It says, go here, go there, go over here and see this person, talk to him. This is the great guide that is the spirit of truth. And it's very, very important for us today, brother, because Satan is involved, okay? He is involved in this work. This uh, last message of Elijah is his specialty. Let's not forget this for a moment. Satan has now infiltrated and has since the message came in 1929, 1930, this message of the Lord's shepherd's rod, Micah 6, 9, where the Lord cries. He doesn't say he talks or tells. He cries for us to hear a message, and it is the rod. You can find that in Micah 6, 9 and Micah 7, 4. Okay, so let us now begin. All right, so there's a very, very important contract that the Lord asks us to enter into. And we can read that in Malachi 3.10. It's the very well-known, uh, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall be not room enough to receive it. And we highlighted receive it because the Lord's going to make sure that we receive something. And what is that? A great blessing that is just too great that to, for, for our understanding, to, for our ex expectations. He's not going to just give us a little blessing. He's going to give us a great blessing. And what do we have to do with it? We have to perform. And the performing is returning his money, not to where we think we ought to, but where his clear history has shown that it is today is God's storehouse. We will go over the history here. We're going to show you today where that is so uh, you can receive. And we are a witness to it of these blessings. We are a witness to it. We run a secular business here in our big, big town, and uh, we are rated number one and have been so shortly after we entered this contract with the Lord. He has made sure to work behind the scenes to raise our company all the way up to the highest e echelon, okay? So it's not us that has done this. It's the Lord. Why? Because we made a contract. So this is something very great. Okay, so the goals for the study. Number one, to show the history of the transfers of God's storehouse. You see, brethren, there's going to be, in this study, we're going to present it starts here, goes there, goes there, goes there. There's a history of transfers, and we need to know the transfers. Number two, to show where God's storehouse is today. Again, very, very important. We need to know this. Number three, to help all those wanting the fulfillment of the contract made in Malachi 3.10, and that is his great blessings, 
to be experienced. We want you to have this same experience that we have received ourselves, that you too can have. And you know, one of the things that I want to make a comment about on this <clears throat> is that we talked to a sister recently from a very, very poor country. And uh, she mentioned that uh, one of the leaders of a, uh, a well-known uh, uh, association of present truth told her that uh, she's in a poor country and she doesn't necessarily have to return tithes. In other words, it's not an obligation to, to the association. And I, and I shook my head and I said, what? What? Did they tell you that? And she said, yes. And so that kind of led us to bring this study together uh, to also make a post on uh, one of our blogs that the Lord, in the lesson of the old lady in the, in the two mites, shows us that it is our self-sacrifice. It is our going to the very bottom, if we have to, to pull out those two cents, to pull out those two mites. To return it to the Lord is commended by the Lord, brother. It's not, oh, the Lord said, well, poor lady, you know, she really didn't have to do that. You know, it's just, okay, we accept it, but, but don't, don't, don't go out of your way to do something like, no, not at all, brother. He said he commended. Nobody's given more than this two old, this lady with these two mites. Okay. So this is what we have to proclaim to the poor is that strive see what you can do and if it's your uh, your way of paying the very last that you have so be it because the lord will fulfill his contract and return a blessing to you now the lord is able remember this the lord is able to put a bag of money on our doorstep okay brethren this is he is able to do that if he has to he will and I'm sure that, you know, there's testimonies that money has appeared for, for brethren in the history of the Christian church, you know, out of nowhere, under car seats, uh, you know, all over. I remember hearing many stories of this. So the Lord is able to do anything and everything to return that blessing. So that's a great thing. All right. So the questions that we want to address in this presentation is number one. Has God had a people, a church, that did not have a storehouse during the Christian dispensation? So we're going to look at that and say, well, you know, during the history, did, did God really not have any storehouses for the people? Number two, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, what are we to do if we think the storehouse is not doing right? In other words, if we think the storehouse is not teaching exactly what they should be teaching, uh, what if the behavior of the members is not good? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Are we, uh, what do we think about that situation? Number three, can we receive the Malachi 310 blessings if we keep his tithes and dispense with it as we see fit? Ah, oh, brethren, very, very key, this number three. There's tricksters out there today that uh, uh, teach. Not only do they pr perform on their own, but they teach it that God has abandoned everything. Do what you want with the tithes. God will be supporting you. Oh boy. Wait till you see the, the answer to that question. Number four, if we study the history from the beginning, apostolic church, we will know exactly where his storehouse is today. Amen. We're going to prove the history of it, and then you're going to be clear from the true pathway that has had that has happened ever since that first church, the apost uh, apostolic church, all the way down to this very day. Okay, so this is going to be a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's start at our very beginning of the storehouse, and it all began with the apostolic church. The record declares, neither was there any among them that lacked, and it tells how the need was filled. Those among the believers who had money and possessions cheerfully sacrificed them to meet the emergency, selling their houses or their lands. They brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Acts of the Apostles, page 70. It was at the ordination of the twelve 
ordination of the twelve that the first step was taken in the organization of the church that after Christ's departure was to carry on his work on the earth. Of this ordination, the record says, He goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Again, Acts of the Apostles, page 16. So we see very clearly that <clears throat> God established his first storehouse with the apostles. The apostles were the ones that were to uh, take care of the, the money and distribute it and do, do what God told them to do. Uh, they didn't say, well, we have a new message. Let's all keep the money in our pockets and go around and hand out whatever we feel is right. No, 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 brother. There's an order here. And this is very important as we go through our study. So the apostolic church become the first tithe collecting church. But why was this? Why? What was the transfer? Well, we read it in uh, track four, page 63 and 64. The Jewish church in which reposed the truth up to the time of Christ was ever to be the storehouse, and the priests were ever to be its stewards. But when they rejected Christ, they forced God to transfer his storehouse to the little handful who did accept the added message for that day. The unbelieving thereby unwittingly forfeited their stewardship. So this is very powerful, brethren, that <clears throat> there is present truth. And if God's people, his church, do not keep pace with present truth, he will take the candlestick away from their, their storehouse and transfer it to another storehouse. In other words, he's going to make sure that those people no longer receive his tithes. It has to go to where present truth is being promoted. All right, so this is going to answer one of the questions that we rose, and that's called the scattering period. And we read, uh, the two witnesses, says the spirit of prophecy, represent the scriptures of the Old and the New Testament. They contain uh, continued their testimony throughout the entire period of 1260 years. The period which the two witnesses were to prophesy cloth and sackcloth ended in 1798. Uh, so there was a time in our storehouse history where the storehouse had to go underground and it was for a very extended period as we know and so unfortunately this period in all the christian dispensation this is the only period that the storehouse basically became uh quiet it became uh, silenced because of the um the need to preserve the church instead of not only the you know the, the collecting of the tithes being paramount, that was put aside, and the actual uh, preserving of the church, the, 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 the ones that flew into the, flown into the Roman, uh, the Rome uh, mountains and all these different areas were preserved so that he could keep his, his church alive. So this was the great uh, persecution of the, uh, of the entire uh, 1260 years. All right, so now we come to the founding of the Seventh-day Adventist movement. And, of course, these uh, these testimonies here are from uh, Testimonies to Ministers, page 24 and 26. Uh, the first one reads, From the first, our work was aggressive. Our members were few and mostly of the poorer class. Our views were almost unknown to the world. We had no houses of worship but few publications and very limited for carrying forward our work. His sheep were scattered in the highways and byways, in cities and towns and forests. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus was our message. Our numbers gradually increased. The seed that was sown was watered of God, and he gave the increase. At first we assembled for worship and presented the truth to those who would come to hear, in private homes, in large kitchens, in barns, in groves, in schoolhouses. But it was not long before we were able to build humble houses of worship. All right, so here we see some of our well-known pioneers of our SDA church, uh, John Blythington, uh, Byington, excuse me, Joseph uh, Bates, James White, Ellen White, 
Stephen Haskell, John Andrews. So here, here right here, as we know, is the very heart of our SDA church, the, the whites, particularly Ellen White here. Uh, they were called of God to, to give the final message uh, to, the, to the people of the world and to the church. And, and, uh, and then, of course, we, we know as present truth believers that it soon passed from Ellen White to the, the last Elijah prophet. All right, so now we have the second tithe collecting storehouse. So we see that the transfer came from the Apollistic Church to the estate church. And that was after that long period of, of uh, persecution where the storehouse basically had to hide underground. Uh, as our numbers increased, it was evident that without some form of organization, there would be great confusion and the work would not be carried forward successfully. To pro provide for the support of the ministry for carrying the work in new fields for protecting both the churches and the ministry from unworthy members for holding church property for the publication of the truth through the press and for many other objects, the organization was indispensable. We had a hard struggle in establishing organization, notwithstanding that the Lord gave testimony after testimony upon this point. Let's stop there for a second, brother. We see that it was the Lord that was guiding our SDA church that we must have organization. We must have a central organized work. We can't let little Adams be in all over the world answering to no one but Jesus directly. That's not how he works. He works through his organization and his ordained organization is the storehouse. So let's keep that important point in mind. The opposition was strong and it had to be met again and again. But we knew that the Lord, Lord God of Israel was leading us and guiding uh, by his providence. We engaged in the work of organization and marked prosperity attended this advanced movement. So we see that once this organization is work is, is begun and, and working in accordance with the Lord's direction, Prosperity comes. But here's something we have to keep in mind. Satan hates organized work. All efforts made to establish order are considered dangerous, a restriction of rightful liberty, and hence are feared as popery. These devoted souls consider it a virtue to boast of their freedom, to think and act independently. They will not take any man's say-so. They are amenable to no man. And here's the key part. I was shown that it is Satan's special work to lead men to feel that it is God's order for them to strike out for themselves and choose their own course of independent, own, their own course independent of their brethren. Can I repeat that one more time? I was shown that it is Satan's special work to lead men to feel that it is God's order for them to strike out for themselves and choose their own course independent of their brethren. Wow. Let's stop and ponder that for a second. Is that powerful? Yes, it is. God does not want individual atoms striking out as lone rangers, thinking that, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, them and God and their tithes, and they're going to do whatever they want to do. And they want to be independent and uh, do their own thing. It's not the way God works. God has an organization. We have to support that organization. We have to be faithful to his organization. This is why the concept of the storehouse must be very clear in our minds. All right, so let's kind of look over a summary of part one. Uh, number one, God makes a promise and we are to test him on it. Number two, God will make sure we receive such a great blessing, we will be amazed. Number three, God began his Christian storehouse with the apostolic church. Number four, after this church dispersed, the storehouse went dark for centuries. Number five, God began anew and formed the SDA church. Number six, the SDA church became the second tide collecting storehouse. So in this presentation, we've had 
the uh, understanding of two the the the, the two uh, storehouses first the apostolic church and Apollo <laughs> sorry brother and I always get stuck on that word as you can see apostolic apostolic church <laughs> and the second is the SDA church so we see that we have now clarity from studying our history of number one and then passing the number two. Of course, we have that time period where it became dark. Um, so that's the the uh, pathway, if we want to call it, from the, there straight on through to the SDA church. That's where we've come so far in our study. Number seven, Satan hates organized work and wants individuals working independently. Ultimately, to keep from entering Malachi 3.10's contract uh, and subsequent blessings. You see, that's the reason that Satan wants that, is that he knows that the Lord wants to give contracts to people. And if we get, if we agree to the contract, and we do our end, then we receive such great things from the Lord that we can't help spread the word that he's great, and he does great blessings. So the, ulti uh, the goal of Satan is to cut that out. And how does he do that? Separates you from the organized work. There's no sort of house. Everybody's messed up. Don't follow nobody. Just do what you want to do and go where you want to go and uh, the Lord will be with you. No, that's a trick, brother. And anybody that comes to you with a presentation, uh, a, a report, run from them. Don't walk away from them. Run from them. They are doing Satan's work. All right, so uh, again, we want to make sure that we get these blessings. So in Malachi 3.10, like this beautiful picture shows, he's going to open the window of heaven for us. Uh, I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. And again, I want to say that the reason why we're so confident in telling you this is because we have been witness to it. We have done the returning of his tithes. Uh, to the proper storehouse, and we have received uh, the blessings, and uh, this can be yours too as, uh, as we do our part. So this concludes part one. We hope you've been blessed. Uh, we'll bring you soon part two, and of course we'll have four parts to do the whole study, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, this, this history is brought to us. So until next time, may God continue to guide you in all truth. God bless.